hey, so we're gonna be homeschoolers. We've done the research, we figured out what we like and what we don't like about each of the different programs. I wrote them all down and I'm gonna tell you how we came to our decision. The first thing we found out is that there is a big difference between digital learning, traditional homeschooling, and cyber academies or public school online, like they're called. After a lot of research, we chose Georgia Cyber Academy. Georgia Cyber Academy, they, our daughters will have their own teachers, individual teachers that are responsible for doing the teaching. We will not be responsible for actually doing the day-to-day -day teaching them. We're gonna be responsible for getting them to class. We're responsible for making sure that they're prepared on time. We are responsible for homework like usual. So you you get more into the traditional role of regular school, which is great for us because digital learning last year, <laughs> well, this year really, because it's still 2020, digital learning was a big awakening, a rude awakening really. And now it looks like the school systems are going to be doing basically the same thing again next year. And I feel like it's gonna be even worse actually. This year when the pandemic hit, everybody went home, everybody stayed home and they were accessible all the time, kind of, because they were home. This year coming, it's gonna be the same type of thing, but now, at least for our county, Gwinnett, the teachers will be doing a mixture, which means that the teachers themselves will physically be present in school some days, and then they will be present online other days. Unless the county is planning on hiring a completely different team for the digital learning, it makes no sense to me of how this is gonna be successful. If you have a child that's doing digital learning full-time, that means they are full-time at home with assignments each day, but the teachers are going to be unavailable on the days that they're in class. So that's not, and then what? And so are we going to expect the teachers to come home after a long day working at school and then also be available in the evening hours to grade our children who are staying at home? No, that's going to fail. Then... Second option means, well, the children are really on their own with the parents for those days that the teachers are in school, but then the days that the parents, the teachers are home, that's when they have an actual coach there or a teacher there helping them. That's not gonna work either. So our children will have a homeroom teacher, which is their main teacher, and then they will have other teachers, just like in a regular school. They're gonna have an art teacher, they'll have a physical ed teacher, and then they would have a, a teacher for anything else that you sign them up for. Something else that we really like is that it's a structured schedule. With the digital learning, we like the flexibility because we were just thrown into it. However, there was no set schedule. Whereas this year going forward with Georgia Cyber Academy, they're gonna have a full a schedule. They're gonna know first class starts at 8.30, each class is 45 minutes. They're gonna have a set time for lunch an hour for lunch and then they come back to class. They have a time every morning that they have to be in class and a time that they have to be out of class. And so they will get tardies, they will get absentee reports and things like that, just like regular school. And so they will continue to have a good structure base, even though it's flexible within that structure. It looks like they get about five minutes between classes. And so it's kind of cute for like the older kids because you remember, I remember being in high school and you only had five minutes to get from one class to the next class. It's going to be an adjustment because we're going back to a schedule, but I, I'm actually looking forward to that because we found ourselves last year doing homework at 8 a.m., doing homework at 8 p.m., doing assign, you know, trying to catch up on assignments and sometimes forgetting to log in or just or missing different things because it was really no schedule. And also each teacher last year with the digital learning it was so fly by the seat that they they really had no schedule either. You know, the same teacher would do a Zoom call this week on Tuesday at 11. Then they'd do a Zoom call next week at not Wednesday at 4 p.m. And then they wanted to do a Zoom call the week. At, then there would be no Zoom call the next week. And then the week after, there'd be a Zoom. And then the teacher themselves would miss the Zoom. Like a lot of times. <laughs> and again, people have stuff that's going on. And we were all thrown into it. I totally get it. We were all caught off guard. Everybody was thrown into it. It was something that nobody was used to, 
but there would be Zoom, a Zoom scheduled for these four classmates or these six classmates, and then the teachers didn't show up. And we we're like, okay. And then like later on, we'd get a message saying, oh, you know, something came up. With digital learning, the teachers were able to create their own individual curriculums. That was another thing. I had friends who had children in the same exact school as myself, same grade, and their teachers weren't requiring the same thing that my teacher was requiring. That was one of the things that I didn't appreciate with digital learning. It wasn't, again, we were all thrown into it. And so um, it might be different this year. I'm really hoping that it's different this year. But one of the things that I didn't appreciate is that some of the things that my children's teachers were requiring, other kids weren't required to do and vice versa. Some of the things that other children were learning, my children weren't learning. That being said, digital learning wasn't horrible. It just was abrupt. And so I don't want to make it sound like I'm bashing digital learning. If you choose to the digital learning, that's great. And if digital learning worked for you, that's awesome. I, just for us, it was just abrupt. And it felt like the bar was set so much higher than we could, we could reach as parents. Um, the curriculum and the assignments that our children were given, they were just like, <laughs> I remember I posted one of the assignments one time and it was just, it was so much that was requested of my kindergartner. And I was like, this is a kindergarten assignment? It felt like the teachers were trying to make sure they justified and showed the parents just how much they really do with our children. And I've always been a believer in teachers and, and the, the education system. I was like, listen, <laughs> you're preaching to the choir. You don't have to try to convince me of your importance. I know your worth. I feel your worth. We feel your worth, like totally. And so it probably wasn't that. I'm just saying how it, feel, how it felt. But really what it was is that I, re I know that as a, in a, as a teacher, you start off slowly with your progression of a class. You get them used to the classroom. You get them used to your teaching style. And then at, at a certain point, it starts to pick up and you guys are re moving like a well-oiled machine. And so when we went into the lockdown, we went into the lockdown right before spring break. By that time, it's March. And these teachers and the students were already in such a good routine and a good groove. And I can imagine that they were getting into the harder things and they were getting into the, they were moving at a nice fast pace because the teacher, the kids already understood their routine and the teachers could move along. And so, but then when you threw the parents into it, we were like, whoa, <laughs> like, I don't know the routine. I don't know. I don't know the routine. I need help. I don't know the routine. <laughs> and so it didn't, it just was too much. Now, that being said, digital learning is probably going to be way better, way easier this year if you start from the beginning. Knowing that teachers and students progress as they go through the school year and they start off at a slow pace and they get into a good routine and a good groove and they're able to start really knocking out assignments and knocking out topics and really learning and chewing chewing the fat like they do it will probably be much easier for digital learning if you start from the beginning in my mind and so either a digital learning at home from the beginning is going to be great or homeschooling the traditional way is going to be great as well i know a lot of people who are going to be doing a traditional homeschooling and the traditional homeschooling is one of two things, either you create your own curriculum and you just source all of your own materials, you source all of your own um, content and things like that, and you make uh, really make it your own. A lot of the homeschoolers, they also do something called de-schooling. I just learned this term as I was looking up and figuring out what we were gonna do. De-schooling is where they try to really break the traditional classroom mindset. And so it's not really sitting at a desk and learning, you know, figuring out and, and having a, a start time and an end time. And these are the subjects and this is what we're going to learn. De-schooling is really more like um, learning anywhere, going to the park, looking at the birds, you know, laying on the laying in your living room, putting a blanket out, uh, not having a structured set space for learning, not having a classroom, not having a desk and where you sit to do what we do. Like usually with deep, usually with these schoolers, they might one day work at the kitchen table. They might one day work in the living room. They might one day work in the backyard. One day they could just have a whole 
session at the grocery store or something like that. And so homeschoolers, those traditional homeschoolers, those parents are usually really creative and really um, put a lot of effort into figuring out what they're going to do, keeping it fresh, keeping it new. Um, and when they have multiple children, they really are rock stars because they're doing these fresh, wonderful, creative ideas and still keeping it engaging for a second grader and a fourth grader and then a eighth grader, <laughs> which, which I think is amazing. I think those homeschoolers are amazing. My hat is completely off to those homeschoolers because then there are the other traditional homeschoolers who will buy like a box curriculum. So I've seen those online. Some of those prices are crazy. Like I've seen some prices as low as 300 bucks and then I've seen some close to $1,000 for a curriculum. Just They send you everything, which is great. And if you have the money and you really want to do it, that's awesome. But um, it was just a little pricey for me, especially because we have two children. And so we would have had to purchase two curriculums. And then it's still all on you. You're the teacher. You're the principal. <laughs> you're the learning coach. You're everything. And so... But with the box sets, the great thing is that they send you everything. But anyway, so those are two different types of traditional homeschooling. That's a broad stroke of homeschoolers. Homeschoolers can get really, really detailed. They can get really, really simplified. So the homeschoolers either make their own curriculum or they buy a box curriculum. Whereas digital learning, you're relying on the school system and the teachers to make the curriculum and then they give it to you and you have to teach the curriculum. And then you also are in charge of the homework and the following up and things of that sort. Whereas a cyber academy, they have their own teacher, you're the learning coach. And so you're responsible for getting them there, getting them to the game, but the teacher is the one that's gonna take them and do everything with them. So I think, I, I think I've touched on everything so far. I'm excited to start with them. We haven't started yet. This will be our first semester. We've heard nothing but good things about them. We heard a few people say it just wasn't for their children, but even the reasons when we probed deeper and we found out the reasons that it wasn't for their children, those reasons still seem like they fit us. You know, some people didn't like the flexibility or some people didn't like the structure, whereas we do. We like that it's flexible and structured. Another thing that we liked about Georgia Cyber Academy is that Georgia Cyber Academy, their grading system and their attendance system, it links up with Gwinnett County School. They try really hard to sync their grading and their attendance systems with all of the different counties in Georgia. And I guess that would be a benefit to trying to do a statewide online schooling like Georgia Cyber Academy. There are other cyber academies that, you know, are just, you can have, anyone can go. You don't have to live in that state, but we chose Georgia Cyber Academy because it still syncs up with Georgia public school systems. It syncs up with everything. So if we do at some point feel like the kids will go back into the traditional brick and mortar classrooms, it's going to be very easy for them to just go straight back into the school system because they're technically, you're technically still in the school system because it is public school online. Oh, another good thing is that they offer stuff like um, language arts that children can take a language if we want them to now it does depend on their grades but if they're doing really good and they've got good grades then they're going to be able to learn a language which is great um it's not impossible but some people like for the professional the professional chef to go ahead and cook the meal let me know when it's ready i will show up and eat <laughs> some people like to try and do it on there some people like to get the recipe from the professional and then they do it which would be like the digital learning kind of thing. And then others would like to make their own recipes, source their own materials and figure it out on their own. And I think that would be more of those traditional homeschoolers. And so you just gotta figure out what's gonna work for you and your family and your children. We all want our kids to succeed. We definitely all want them to be safe. We just want them to be safe and be happy because this is something that has never happened before. We're just all going to have to roll with the punches and try to figure out what we can do, what's the best route for our individual family. We're just happy that Georgia Cyber Academy is an option. And so when we laid out all the options, it's just something that's really, we believe it's gonna work for our family. And so whatever you choose, it's gonna be great for them because you're gonna choose it with love, just like we did. All right.